Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. I want to start by talking about the idea of an inclusive world. What does the word inclusive mean? Well, according to Merriam-Webster, the term inclusive means including everyone, especially those who have been historically excluded, including those with disabilities. An inclusive world is one in which every community embraces all of its members. You might think that we already live in an inclusive world. We're all fundamentally free and have access to all public resources and all communities. And technically you're right. However, an inclusive world is one in which everyone feels like a part of the community through their close bonds with those around them, no matter their differences. I'm here to show you that we don't have an inclusive world and that you can do something to help change that. To begin, I'd like to do an activity with everyone here today. I want you to think back to your childhood. Maybe and hopefully you spent some time on the playground, whether in parks or at school. Now, while playing on the swings or going down the slides, who is beside you? Who did you run around the playground with? Now that you have a fond memory in your head, think about all the differences between you and your friend. Maybe you ran around hand in hand with a person of a different race. Perhaps you were best friends with a member of an opposite sex. Perhaps you went down the slide together with a friend from a different socioeconomic background. So whatever it may be, what was different between you two? Most people can quickly identify a difference, whether it's in race, gender, or socioeconomic status. However, the chances are low that somebody in the audience today said that they were friends with an individual with a disability. Why? When we're younger, we're known to be open to all friendships. According to Dr. Amber Williams from the California Polytechnic University of San Luis Obispo, we tend to have more cross-racial friendships and cross-sex companies when we're younger than we do when we're older. However, even in our childhood years, when we are in our most open-minded state, we tend to avoid forming relationships with those with disabilities. Dr. Karen Diamond of Purdue University has even shown that children are aware of disabilities in their peers from as early as four years old and are less likely to interact with them. So what are some of these impediments to us freely interacting with those with disabilities? It comes down to the fact that growing up, we became the closest of friends with those that we could have a conversation with, those with strong social skills. So according to research conducted by Dr. Foster Pear at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology and his collaborators, children with disabilities, specifically those with cognitive disabilities that are socially accepted in preschools are often the ones that with the most vital social skills. So when young children subconsciously distance themselves from those with disabilities, even as early as in preschool, it shapes their long-term perceptions of the group. As a result, too many adults see these individuals for their disability and not as a potential peer or a friend. So maybe the secret to creating a more inclusive world for those with disabilities starts at an early age by encouraging preschoolers and kindergartners to initiate a conversation with their quieter peers and interact with everyone. But even as adults, there are simple shifts that we can make to our mindset to help create a more inclusive community. So what would it take for each of us to create the ultimate inclusive world together? It requires us to change the way we approach our interactions with everyone. It's human nature to find a few identifying features to describe or remember a person. Whether that can be a character trait like a person's optimism or a physical trait like a disability. However, it's essential to remember that there's more to a person than their trait. I fell into this trap as well. When I first started interacting with children with individuals intellectual disabilities in my community, I would often be overly conscious around them and slightly awkward as I didn't know how to have a proper conversation. 
But after finding deep-rooted friendships with hundreds of individuals from the community, I got a better understanding of my initial problem. It was that I saw each child as a kid with a disability rather than a potential friend. So I started to approach my interactions as I would with anyone by listening and trying to find similarities. After all, the strongest friendships come from shared interests. Each of my successes has only reaffirmed my belief that we should be seeking connections with everyone through our similarities. In high school, I've had many opportunities to make friends with our special education peers. The first day I approached my school special education, I'll admit I was very, very nervous. I didn't know what to expect as it was one of my first times interacting with kids with moderate to severe disabilities. But when I walked in, almost all my nervousness melted away as I was met with broad smiles. On my first day in the classroom, we had conversations about math games, our favorite colors, and space, one of my favorite topics. I continued to visit them every single day at lunch. My perspective on those with disabilities changed drastically over time. I started to see them as friends and peers, just like anyone else, more than anything else. For example, I met Rohan. Of course, that's not his real name, but he was so incredibly fascinated about space. He used to talk about looking into a telescope and gazing at stars for hours. So when I learned how his interests could be connected with him with his best friend in special education, I knew that he could meet more friends for his love uh, with, by connecting through his love for space. So after learning about our school space club, I brought him to it as one of his first experiences attending a school club dominated by general education, he was so nervous, I could tell. It took him less than five minutes though to get comfortable and excited as he talked to everyone around him about the rocket that they were building together. And in fact, over the two years that I got to know him, that was probably the most comfortable that I've seen him in an extremely socially demanding situation. Sarah is another student well known in our special education for her love for TikTok. We used to practice and film TikToks together during our lunches. And that's how he loved sharing her time with, love, with people around her and those that she cared about. And might I say, she had some of the best dance moves I've ever seen. The constant laughs and moments that we shared kept me connected with her. Our bond only got stronger through our shared experiences, even the dull moments. On one being when she was struggling with loss. On January 26, 2020, Kobe Bryant, a famous basketball player, well known for his grit and determination, passed away. The sudden helicopter accident that resulted in his passing left many of his fans in mourning. However, from what I had seen from those around me, the incident hit Sarah the worst. As a student who often watched Kobe at home with her family, her mood shifted that day as she struggled to process the information. It was a very, very hard time for her. And to this day, I'm proud of how she learned to deal with her emotions in the situation. She approached the situation in her own amazing way. Instead of crying or sulking, she got right to work writing letters to the family. She cut out pictures of Kobe on the court, added texts about what a legend he was, and colored it with her assorted markers. She spoke about Kobe's mourning family, and once done, she mailed her letters to them. And that day, as she wrote her letters at lunch, I sat next to her, helping her put it all together. Our relationship was built on moments like this. My friendship with Sarah is one of many connections that define my high school experience and shape my perspective on those with disabilities. I learned that we're all the same in our emotions. Most of us see connections with each other and that connection can almost always be found in shared experiences and interests. Every relationship that I forge with neurodiverse individuals is unique and meaningful to me. They show me the meaning of optimism and gratitude in life. And despite their struggles, they wear a smile on their face and look forward to all the little things. Looking beyond their disabilities has enabled me to witness Sarah's ability to empathize with Kobe's family, even when she was at her lowest, and Rohan's deep passion for his area of interest 
despite his hurdles in pursuing it. So if there's one thing that you take from this talk today, it's that the future of an inclusive world starts with each and every one of us. We as students are the future of the world. And as cheesy as it sounds, we're the ones that define our tomorrow. We're the leaders, the future leaders, the CEOs, and the members of our community. We have the power to shape our future world as we constitute the new social norms. So by changing our own perspectives of those with disabilities, we can right the wrongs of today for the future. It starts with you taking the step to connect with an individual with a disability, whether that's over Legos, robots, fashion, books, or music. Take a trip down to your special education classroom. It only takes one interaction to change the way you see the world. And in doing so, you might make new lasting friendships. I know I did many times over. Thank you so much.